actually pretty typical of humpback whales. They can be separate from it, and then sometimes they will join up and form what we call association groups. So still traveling together. Our two o'clock now is coming up. I believe was the year that Orbit, both Orbit and Javier also had their last house in 2010. They're fine with both. Orbit is actually a grandmother. She's had three calves that have had calves of their own. And one is Isthmus. She's had a number of calves as well as Division. Division, a personal favorite of mine. Division had her most recent calf last year in 2011. I can't remember off the top of my head which of her other calves has had calves, but suffice it to say that Orbit is a grandmother, and we have certain individuals that we know are actually great grandmothers, so we've traced four generations of these humpback whales in some instances. Excuse me, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Ready to come on this side, come, sweetie. I think we're going to come here. I'm still searching around again. Okay. I got the tire coming down. And the video, so we have to take pictures. 
So this is pretty typical humpback whale behavior, as I mentioned before. Humpback whales are often very solitary, and that's true of all baleen species. You'll notice that we're not seeing very big groups, and Orbit and Columbia are not actually related. So therefore, they are not traveling in what we call pod. Pods is a term that is mostly used to refer to dolphins or toothed whales. And as you may or may not know, toothed whales, like dolphins, you see it? travel You're in beautiful, big right? groups that are related by matrilineal lines. That is to say that they're related by another line. Adam. And Adam. so we know that they are related by lines, but humpback whales, when they get together, Humpback whales, when they get together, we know from our observation of this population for so many years that typically when they form a group of two or three or more, which happens sometimes, none of the individuals in that group are related unless it is a mother and calf. Where's Laura, Adam? So we don't really know why they form these associations. It could be for a number of things. We often see them feeding in groups, but we have seen them feeding individually. So perhaps it's just for survival reasons, to help with finding fish, because two heads can be better than one. But also, one thing we have noticed since we have been studying this same group for so many years is that certain individuals seem to join up together at some point each summer. It might only be for a couple of days or even a couple of weeks. But for whatever reason, certain individuals seem to always find each other each summer up here. So for example, I mentioned salt earlier. Salt was first seen hanging out with a other female whale named, can you guess? Hmm. Pepper. So salt and pepper have been seen again this year. However, I know that salt has also been seen in an association or a group with another female whale named Buckshot. And Buck. salt and Buckshot often seem to be traveling together or sticking together um, on the years that Salt does not have a calf. When she has a calf, she tends to be more solitary, and she doesn't form groups with anybody. I want to record you. But other whales, such as whales named Nile and Barb, Nile is a female and Barb is a male. Uh, they also seem to find each other each summer. They've been observed being together pretty much every summer. Did you see it? No, no. There were two whales, Columbia yeah. and Orbit. And there's another group. Um, when I first started studying these animals, there was a group of four whales, Cajun and her little calf, and then two other whales named Pele and Milkweed, and they were together pretty much the entire summer. So, there you go, so there. two whales up here at 9 o'clock. These are our two humpbacks. So Orbit and Columbia. Sometimes associations can be very, very temporary. They can last for only a few minutes or maybe only a couple hours, but luckily it looks like they're both still hanging out here with us. So we turn the boat here, they're coming up. So I see a lighter patch of green water here. It looks like those are definitely bubbles made by a whale. I don't think you're going to see a whale come up here because I think the animals that just made it have surfaced. So, looks like Columbia oh, is going to get a push here. That was an arch. Oh. And that is Orbit. And Columbia should be here. Still here with us. So it looks like they were feeding in the water column. They blew those bubbles deep underwater, and then they already launched up there. Here goes Columbia. She's a nice flyer. She's beautiful. So again, we saw that solar cloud come up. They've already blown those bubbles. They had already launched through and captured all that fish. 
Um, and then the bubbles came up to the surface much later after they did. So very, very deep underwater. It took that much time for those.